Are you sick and tired of having a boring standard iron farm in your Minecraft world? Well, you've come to the right video. Today, I'll be showing you how to build a mega iron farm on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. This iron farm is also a villager trading hall where you can get any trade or any profession in the game. It is a villager crop farm where you can get multitudes of potatoes, carrots, wheat, or beetroots in one area. It's also a villager breeder to supply your villager empire and a villager curing station to get you the best trading discounts and the best prices for any of the villagers inside of your villager trading hall. This is basically the ultimate villager contraption with basically every single type of villager farm in one. It's very easy to build and you can pick and choose which aspects of this you build. It is basically everything you need from villagers and a little bit more. So let's take a look at how this works. The iron farm is up top here. Iron golems will spawn and fall down into the middle there, die, and then all all of their drops will go into the middle. This farm produces, you know, around 400 and some iron per hour, so the standard amount. And then around the edges of that, we have a villager trading hole. In here, you can have any villager that you want. They're linked to the workstations in front of them. Underneath the iron farm, we have a villager crop farm. As you can see, we got one on this side and one on this side, and all of the output goes over here. As you can see, we're getting a bunch of potatoes on that side and a bunch of carrots on this side over here. You can also put a villager breeder on the back side of this thing and that is going to give you an absolute ton of villagers as you see we got the babies and we have some adults so we can use these guys to build another villager empire somewhere else or just send them into the trading hall to get better trades if you feel like it, you can also put some zombie villagers back here and cure these guys every now and again. Curing any of these guys will give a discount to every single villager in this area, making them cheaper to trade with. And as you can see, we're getting iron golems at the top here, so it is actually a functional iron farm. We're also getting cats as well, so you even get a little bit of string. This is a very customizable build. You don't need to build it exactly as shown, so you can move the villager training hall off to the side. You could put the villager crop farms on the side over there you could remove the entire villager breeder if you wanted to you can pick and choose which aspects of the farm that you build if you're a subscriber of the channel, then you might recognize some of these builds from my other tutorials, and that's because I made a tutorial on each individual part of this farm, such as the village breeder, the curing station, the iron farm, the crop farms. I got individual tutorials for all of those, but I always get a bunch of questions asking how do we combine these things, and how do we build them right next to each other? So today, I thought we would throw them all into one pile, explain the mechanics about how you're going to get this to work properly in your Minecraft world, that way you can build this, customize it, and have a lot more fun with villagers. In order for this build to work out for you, you need to understand some basic mechanics on how iron farms work in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So let's talk about that real quick. The entire system is based on how many beds you have. So you need at least 20 beds in order to even have a chance at getting iron golems, and you need at least 10 villagers to get an iron golem. Now, 75% of these guys need to have a profession and have worked in the last day so that means that like eight out of ten need to have a profession now if you want to get better rates at your iron farm then you'll need 20 villagers and that will give you the mob cap of two iron golems at one time which will significantly increase your rates now, the important thing to remember is that it's all based on beds. So you need to have the beds at the very top center of your farm because where the iron golems spawn is determined by where the beds are placed. Now, when it comes to villager breeding, it's also all based on beds. So because we have 20 beds, we're only allowed to have 20 villagers. If we have 21 villagers and 20 beds, no iron golem will spawn. If we have 22 beds and 21 villagers, then they can breed and make a 22nd villager. If we have 100 beds, then we can have up to 100 villagers in our villager breeder. So the more villagers that you want into the farm, the more beds that you need to add. So remember that the majority of your villagers need to have a workstation and they need to have worked at that workstation in the previous day. If they don't work, you're not gonna get iron golems. So that's a little bit of a short and sweet explanation of iron golem mechanics, villager breeding mechanics, and bed mechanics on Bedrock Edition. If you want a deep dive on these mechanics, you can check out the video in the upper right. That goes over basically everything about these guys on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. 
The villager curing mechanics are also pretty simple. So if you cure a zombie villager just by shooting a weakness arrow at it and clicking on it with a golden apple, that will give the discount to everyone within this massive range around the zombie villager. As you can see, that guy has cured and now this guy over here has a little bit of a discount. Now this is a temporary discount, so it will go away over time and it's not that powerful. So that's why you might need to cure them several times over. If you turned this guy into a zombie and then cured him that discount is permanent and it is a lot stronger so it reduces their prices even more if you happen to build your villager training hall around a zombie spawner every single time that a zombie villager spawns in that will actually give a discount to everyone in the area because of pretty much a bug or an unattended mechanic this mechanic has been around for a couple of years now so it's pretty safe to use that's about everything you need to know about the mechanics for this farm if you need a detailed tutorials for any individual part of it there is a links to my original tutorials in the description there's also additional information down there and in the pinned comment and if you're new here then maybe consider subscribing for more tutorials like this one thank you so much and let's hop into the tutorial there's a materials list down in the description of the video that way you know everything you need to build with you're mostly going to need a 21 wide by 21 long area and the iron farm is going to be eight blocks tall the villager breeder is going to be a little bit taller than that overall you want to make sure that you have a little bit of room to all sides of this build that way you can expand it later on so we're going to start with the iron farm in the middle because that's the biggest thing it's also one of the easier things but you could start off with whatever piece of infrastructure you want if you you already have a villager breeder for example you could just build up around that so choose where the middle of your iron farm is going to be we're going to build up ourselves a little three by three platform in the middle put yourself down a double chest and a hopper going to the side of that this is going to be your item collection for the farm we need a solid block there a glass block there and then we're going to put a little bit of a glass block kind of ring all the way around this thing to contain our iron golems cats and the water so this needs to be a total of two blocks tall you can build this out of solid blocks like stone or whatever but i prefer building it out of glass that way you can actually see in there we're going to put a campfire down there in the corner and two buttons above it and then a water bucket in the far corner this is going to push all of your cats down into the campfire and all of your items into your collection area we now need to get ourselves two signs right here like so and then another ring of solid blocks going around the top edge of this get one button on the middle of each one of those rings and then crouch and place in yourself a lava bucket right here in the middle and this is what's going to actually kill the iron golems you could place in the lava later if you're not comfortable with having it there right now now we need to build the spawning platform of our iron farm so extend out all of these little rings right here by seven blocks so one two three four five five six seven and then do that on the other three sides as well and then once you have them all extended out by seven go ahead and connect the corners together so this is what it should look like once you have all the edges marked out and now you just need to go ahead and fill in all the center areas and make sure you build this out of solid blocks you cannot use slabs and that is our spawning platform done. Now we're going to put a ring of leaves going all the way around the edges. We have to use leaves. That way iron golems don't spawn on the edges of this. And that's pretty much what it should look like. Now we need to go to each one of the corners. Place in yourself a solid block right there. And then two more leaves up in the edges. And do this on all four corners. And now it's time for the water. So start in any corner that you want. You need to place in yourself a water bucket right there on the corner. Skip this block and then place one right here and then just keep placing them on every other block until you reach the far side do not place water sources next to the corner block and place a water source up on the corner like so all this water should flow directly to the edge like so if it doesn't reach then you build the platform too long and if the water flows over the button or over the edge then you've built it too short so make sure it's all counted out correctly make sure the water flows to the edge and then fill in all the water across the other three sides and now we need to place in all the beds. The beds are going to be going right above the center of the iron farm here in the middle. So we need to go up by three blocks and then build ourselves a little bit of a platform that is two blocks wide going all the way around the center three by three of the farm. 
And that's what your little platform should look like. And now we're going to place the beds on top of all of this. So we're going to have seven beds along this edge right here. And then seven beds on this side over here. Three beds and between the edges on that side and on this side as well. And that is a total of 20 beds. This is the minimum that you need to have a functional iron farm. And if you want to have more than 20 villagers in the area, just go ahead and expand this platform. So you would expand it out and then just keep on adding more beds all the way around this. All the beds in the area should be at this location. Do not have any beds like on the ground or something because that could make your iron golems spawn the ground. So make sure all the beds in the area are up here. Go ahead and remove the platform that is underneath the beds. And then if you want to, now you can place in that lava block because we are done at the top of the farm. And now we need to put in our first villager. This is going to be our detection villager, which is going to be able to detect all of the beds up here. If you just put all of your villagers on the ground, they're not actually going to link to those beds because they are too far down. So our first villager needs to go right here on the edge of the farm with its feet at the same layer as these leaves. We're going to go ahead and put some leaves around the edges and then a leaf above it. Go ahead and put in your villager right here. As you can see, he is going to link up to these beds because it gets the green particles. And then just give it any workstation that you want. And this guy is now going to be here forever. Go ahead and put a leaf above that workstation too so nothing spawns on it. And now we can continue building the rest of the area. Installing our villager trading hall, our crop farms, our breeder, our curing station. Whatever you want to do, this is the foundation of your entire farming area. To build the villager training hall, you need to line up yourself with the center of the iron farm on the bottom layer. Go over and line yourself up with that piece of glass and place in a soil block right underneath this lip of the iron farm right here. And now we're going to be placing in solid blocks every other block until we reach the corner of the farm. In which case we'll be going a little bit diagonal with it as you can see here. We're basically going to place in these blocks every other block going all the way around the iron farm. Or as large as you want your trading hall to be. We're going to be putting villagers in between these solid blocks. And we need at least 9 additional cells down here. So we can have a total of 10 villagers in the area. That way our iron farm actually produces golems. So once you've marked out where you want all of your villagers to be standing we need to place in a couple blocks on these walls right here and then a few blocks on the back and on the top put in yourself a trapdoor right there and that is going to be the entirety of the cell the villager is just going to be going in there you flick it down to protect it from zombies you put the workstation right in front of it and that's all there is to it so we need to build up these little cells going all the way around the edges of the farm. Just two blocks on the back, build up these side walls, a couple blocks on the front, and then a trapdoor. You can remove that block if you want to, and it's as simple as that going all the way around. Once you're ready to put villagers into all of your cells, it's really easy. You just need to get your villagers into a minecart, point the rails directly into the cell, and then nudge him all the way in there. Break that minecart, and now the villager is stuck in there forever. So go ahead and fill in all of these cells if you already have villagers. If you don't have villagers, then the next step is to build a villager breeder. You can put your villager breeder wherever you want, but I'm going to be putting it on the back side of the farm. That way we have easy access to all the baby villagers, which we can then put directly into the trading hall. To build the villager breeder, you're going to need a four deep area that is eight blocks wide and roughly 11 blocks tall as well. And then we're also going to need some room on this side for a minecart rail to get the villagers out of the farm. So we're going to place in ourselves three chests right here for the baby villagers to stand on. Surround that with some glass blocks on all sides going up by two layers and then place in yourself some buttons above those chests and some temporary blocks above those buttons now we need to extend this up by another two blocks in all of these areas like so except we need this little part to not have any glass blocks go ahead and break out a two by two of blocks right here place in a water bucket so that all the villagers get flown into this corner and now we need to surround this with two layers of glass going all the way around it like so place in yourself another two blocks right there to prevent the villagers from bobbing up and down and now we need to extend a little bit of an you know wall to either side and then a little bit of a wall right there as well. Now we're going to place in ourselves a button right there and a water bucket on this far back corner. That is going to push all of your villagers into the output cell. Now go ahead and break out this temporary block and replace that with water. This temporary block and replace that with water. And then just remove that one. So all of your baby villagers are going to fall down, land in this area, stay there for about 20 minutes until they grow up into an adult. When they grow up, they will bob into this water and flow over to this output area. 
To finish up the breeder, we need to put in another wall on the back side, going up by three blocks right there, three blocks on the side, three blocks on the front, and then another little three blocks right here. And then we're going to cover up this area right here with just two pieces of glass. So now we need to place in ourselves a temporary block, and then two glass panes right there in the middle, and surround that with some upper slabs, that way the glass panes don't connect to them. Now place in yourself a trap door on this side right here, and flick that up words and place in ourselves some walls on this side and a little roof on the top of it. Now get yourself some mine carts and some rails and bring up a villager all the way into this side of the farm right here. Just place it right in there. It should be an adult villager, not a baby. And then we're just going to block it in. And then you need to do the same thing on this side as well. So basically you need one villager on either side of this. We're going to give both of these guys a profession. So just place down like a fletching table or something. That guy's going to link to it and this guy's gonna link to it as well this is important for the iron farm to be functional so that is the villager breeder basically complete to get yourself some baby villagers all you need to do is throw this guy a few pieces of bread or potatoes and make sure that each one of them has food and then as soon as both of them have food then they're gonna start probably sharing it as you can see there and there you go just a few seconds later we got our first hearts and now we're gonna start getting some baby villagers falling down the middle of this thing and landing on our chests. As you can see there, perfect example, there goes our baby villager. This guy will take 20 minutes to grow up into an adult, but once he does grow up, he's gonna bob over to this side. To get your adult villagers out of this area, it's very simple. We need to break out these two blocks right here, place in ourselves a solid block, and then a little line of solid blocks for our rail line. We're gonna place in a powered rail right there, a lever above that to power it, two pieces of regular rail, some more regular rail, and then get in yourself some powered rail over here. So just place in yourself a a regular minecart that's gonna bob up and down never quite getting over this ledge as you can see if we have an adult villager in there and we place down a minecart he's gonna get right into there and then we can send him straight into the villager training hall with no hassle after just a few minutes your villagers should breed enough little babies to fill up the mob cap and you should have enough villagers down there to fill up all of your villager training hall cells these guys are gonna keep breeding until they run out of food or there is an equal amount of villagers to beds if you want more villagers, add more beds. Keep in mind that if you have a bunch of adult villagers in this pen right here, none of these guys have a job, so there is a chance that they could prevent iron golems from spawning since none of them are working. So if you don't have any iron golems spawning, just put them somewhere in the villager training hall, give them a job, and you should get iron golems once again. But what if you've run out of food and you can't get any more villagers to breed? Well, then you need a villager crop farm, don't you? If you want to build a big stack of crop farms, get yourself thousands upon thousands of items, check out my full tutorial for that. I'll be showing you how to build a mini crop farm down here at the bottom. It uses the same principles and concepts, however. So first thing that we're going to do is fill in all these gaps on the back sides of all of the training hall cells. That way the villagers in your training hall don't pick up any food through the corners. Now go to the back side of the iron farm and anywhere that you don't have villager cells for your training hall, just go ahead and put in a little bit of a wall going all the way around this thing just to contain those villagers and this needs to be two blocks tall that way they don't jump out. Go to the front of the iron farm and we need to fill in all these little gaps at the bottom of the iron farm kill chamber there in the center and then we need to put a wall on the back side of this to split this area into two that way we can have two crop farms one on the left and one on the right. We're also going to put in another wall right here to split that area off and another wall right here to split off that area. To place in the water sources for the farm, you need to count out from the corners of the kill chamber. So one, two, three, pop out that block, put in a water source. We need a glass block above it and then put in yourself a light source on the ceiling, either like a jack-o'-lantern, glowstone, a seed lantern, even just a block with torches on every side of it would work fine. Just enough to actually allow the crops to grow. We need to do that on this side as well. So one, two, three, pop out this block right here, place in yourself a water source, and then cover it with glass and a light emitting block on the ceiling. Now go ahead and hoe all the ground in here. And now you need to get an adult villager in here. So grab it from your villager breeder, use a minecart, whatever you gotta do. And this guy needs to have himself a composter right above this water 
water source here in the middle. And this guy is ready to farm this entire area. Get and yourself a farmer villager on the opposite side as well. To get the crops out of the villager crop farms and into a storage device, you need to break out a block here on the corner. So we need ourselves in a double chest right here. And then place in some saw blocks above these corners. Place in two fence gates right there. And then we need a hopper onto the back side of that chest. And then another hopper into the side of that chest. And then place in a glass block right here on top of that chest to protect your villager from zombies. So basically, whenever you have a villager in this cell right here and in this cell right here, the farmer in the middle out there is going to try and throw them some food. That food's going to land in the hopper and then it's going to be profit. On the inside, you also need to place a glass block right there, right here, and right here, just so that the fence posts don't connect and your villager has an easier time throwing food to them. So go ahead and build this little item collection system on the other side as well. That way you can get crops from both of your crop farms. And all you need to do to kickstart the crop farms is throw them a few seeds. So I'm going to be giving this guy over here some beetroot seeds. He's going to go ahead and plant those basically immediately. And then just throw some potatoes in there. He'll walk towards it. And these guys are already going to be farming for you. It really is as simple as that. By now, the villager breeder should have some adults in it. So grab yourself a minecart and start putting these guys into the villager training hall and giving them profession blocks. You can just go ahead and kill any of the nitwits. And now that you've started to fill in your trading hall and each of these guys are linked to the workstation directly in front of them, we should start to see some iron golems spawning after a few minutes. And as you can see, we got our first iron golem in the farm. He's going to drop right down into the middle, die in the lava, and then all the drops are going to go into your chest. So we now have a fully functional area. If you're not having any iron golems, you can check the pinned comment down below for a video on how to troubleshoot iron farms. Chances are it's something really simple, like you don't have enough beds, your villagers aren't linked to the correct workstations, or something else like that. If you built the system around a zombie spawner, then you're already going to be getting the automatic zombie discounts from the spawner. So you don't really need to do anything else. This area is now complete and you have a fully functional trading hall, crop farm, iron farm, and villager breeder. But if you did not build it around a zombie spawner, then you'll want some sort of curing station. If you want to use a zombie curing station, you're going to need to be playing on hard difficulty. That way they actually convert into zombies instead of just dying. Dying. Building a zombie villager curing station is really easy. You just need this little 5x5 five five area right here of a rail line, a hole down in the middle, and then a little bit of a solid block roof above it. That way your zombie doesn't burn. So the first thing that you need to do is get a solid block right there and then find yourself a zombie. These guys are pretty easy to find at nighttime. Just push them down into that hole. You can then remove the rail line and he is now stuck down in there. Build up a pillar next to him like so. And then we need to go down by a block and place down a pistol facing directly downwards above him and now we can fill in those two blocks remove these place in ourselves a piece of redstone dust and now we need to place in some dispensers facing downwards on all sides of this piston so you need four of these in total and now that all of those are installed you can remove the temporary blocks that you use to place them in we need one lever pretty much anywhere on this thing and as soon as we power that that is going to activate all of our dispensers and that's going to activate our piston now go ahead and place a little bit of a diamond of glass blocks going all the way around this area and now you need to get some villagers in here so just plop a villager into each corner you only need one but the more villagers that you cure the better the discounts will be and whenever you do not want your zombie to attack them just flick that lever and then he won't be able to reach the villagers Grab yourself some arrows of weakness. You can buy these from fletching villagers or make them yourselves. And you want to put a few of these into each dispenser. This will give your zombie villagers the weakness effect. And then you just got to come on through and click on them with a golden apple. So we're going to wait for all four of our villagers here to convert into zombies. As you can see, it doesn't really take that long. Now that all of our villagers are converted into zombies, they don't count towards the mob cap or anything like that. So these guys do not need beds and they don't need workstations. They're pretty much just inert pieces of the farm. So now whenever you want to cure them, you just flick this lever. Each one of them will get hit with a weakness arrow. Click on them with a golden apple. And now all four of them will be curing. As soon as all four of them cure, that is going to apply a pretty steep discount to everyone in your villager trading hall. 
And now that they are cured, all of our villagers are going to have a pretty good discount. So you can keep on curing those guys multiple times to get even better discounts for all of your villagers. It's easiest to keep these guys as zombies when you're not using them, but if you want to keep them as villagers and actually trade with them, then you'll need to give them all a workstation, and you'll need to make sure that there is enough beds for them as well. Now, whenever they're turned back into zombies, those beds are going to be freed back up, so your villager breeder might make more babies filling up their beds. Honestly, it's easiest just to keep them zombies and then you don't need to worry about it. Once you're done building everything, I would highly recommend that you torch spam the entire area. That way it's fully lit up to prevent mob spawns. And then you should also put a little wall around the whole thing as well, just to keep out zombies. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, then let me know in the comment section down below. I'm always trying to help you guys out as best as I possibly can. And if you enjoyed today's video, then drop a like as it helps out the video on the channel a ton. Maybe subscribe if you're new here for more Bedrock Edition tutorials in the future. And otherwise, I'll see you guys down in the comments and in the next one. And then there was silence.